move on now to chapter 7 which is entering troop for the first time and building additional temporary tools so let's move on so as it says the last bit of the temporary system and do a lot of this inside a troop environment so the first thing we need to do is go back to root and the next thing we'll do before we do anything else is check that we've still got LFS set which we have so now we can run these commands. First of all, we've got to change ownership of everything to root. And in the case of 64 bit, we've got an extra directory which needs to be modified. Now we're going to create some virtual kernel file systems. So I need to make somewhere to mount them first of all. Now we can actually mount these virtual file systems, all provided by the kernel, into these new locations we've just created. And you can see just checking the output of each one, it's all successful, it's telling us where it's mounting it, which is under MNT LFS, which is good. Don't want it to be mounted anywhere else, especially if it's in the host system. That could cause some serious problems. And again, in some host systems, there's a symbolic link um, that means that another directory might need to be created. And again, in Gen 2, it's not necessary. So you can see the Gen 2. And I think Endeavor OS is the same thing. They're extremely good environments for building Linux from scratch. So now we're going to enter the Truth environment. Um, one thing I'm going to modify here in this troop command is the make flag setting. So if I just remind myself of the um, make flag setting, what I'm going to do is incorporate this setting inside the troop command so that it's not something I have to remember to set each time. If I need to come out of truth and I need to enter it again, um, which is unlikely, but if I do, I don't have to remember to set it. All I need to do is to remember to recall this true command and it will already have the make flags setting within it. So it's kind of automatic then. So I'll just complete this by adding in the last line. And to prove that that is there, I'll first display one of these. So for example, term, that's got something in it. And now I'll display the um, make flags setting. And you can see that's set as well. So that's all good. So as it says there, don't worry about this. I have no name that will get resolved in the next few pages. Um, it's just that there's some configuration missing, which we're about to do. Um, it also says that some directories that I mentioned here have maybe already created, but they're being recreated here just completeness. So every directory here is what is required for a Linux from scratch installation, irrespective of whether they've been created already. So rather than put these all in individually, I'm just going to copy all this in one go. Uh, as long as I don't get any errors, I'll just go back and check. So there's the install commands at the end of what I just copied. So all of it says make the create directory, a couple of links, a couple of or three installs. Yep, there's no errors there, so that's fine. Now there's some essential files and sim links. So this one's for the currently mounted file systems. A hosts file and these are these cat commands are all one command effectively uh, the lines in between the cat and the EOF are the contents of the file that's been created so we have to copy these all in in one go then a tester user is created and it's done not with the user add command because that probably doesn't exist at the moment. 
and it's probably pointless to build the one package that it's part of at this early stage so it's created manually now we've got enough configuration in place that we rerun the bash as a login command you can see this I have no name is gone and it reports the name of the root user which is of course root finally I'll copy all these in here just to finish off um, I believe a lot of these files it might even say it here some of these log files don't get updated if they don't already exist so you have to touch them or create them or change the correct permissions for them to be updated and we carry on building the temporary system by building get text so first of all we've got to change the sources directory which is now in the root because we've changed root into mnt lfs previously sources was in mnt lfs sources but now it's just sources because the root has shifted from two levels into mnt lfs and prove that by just displaying the files that we downloaded earlier today so let's start by extracting get text changing into it and we'll start the configuration again most of the configuration and building here is fairly similar commands because we're still building just a temporary system it's not until we get to the next chapter 8 where the commands are a bit more specific to each package to configure them correctly in a less generic way so bear in mind most if not all the packages um, that we're building now will be using the um, just purely the packages we've already built rather than packages from the host system Okay, and we'll build that now.
Right, so that's built. Uh, there's only a certain number of programs that need to be installed. So this command just copies these programs. There's no proper installation at this stage. And let's get text done. Tidy that up and move on to Bison. So extract, change into the directory and configure. Build it. And install the package. So that's Bison complete. And move on to Perl. So we'll start with the configuration. Now we run make to build Perl.
Right, well that's Pearl done, so just need to install it. And we can tidy it up and move on to Python. Our Python package begins with a capital P. There's a couple of packages like this, at least at least a couple anyway. So we need to remember to spell it with a capital P. Otherwise we'll probably get the documentation, I think. Or nothing at all. Same with the output directory. So run the configure. Okay, now let's build it. It does say that some packages may produce fatal error messages, uh, but it's not a problem. It mentions the reasons why that is. So as long as the top level make doesn't fail, uh, everything will be fine at this point. Right, so that's built. Let's install Python. And that's complete. So clear up the source directory and move on to text info. And very straightforward installation here. So prepare it for compilation. Pilot. And install. That's text info done. Move on to Util Linux next. C 
so we've got to move a file here or create a directory we'll look to it, sorry to keep up to the FHS standards now we can run configure and build the packages this takes a few, oh no it's not that long, it's about a minute or so Okay, now let's install Linux Utils or Util Linux rather. That's it, so tidy up. And that's it for this section. So all I need to do is clean up and save the temporary system. So what we've got at the moment is a system that is uh, 3.3 gigs in size. So that includes half a gig of source files. So it's approximately 2.8 gigabytes of uh, files we've created. Um, so we can strip this down a little bit to remove some unnecessary stuff, stuff that's not needed for building the final system. So if we run that and then run the size checker, that hasn't made much difference. Uh, some LA files, lip archive files which are not needed. That hasn't made that much difference and tools it uses about one gigabyte of space so that's going to be a significant amount of space saving if you type for space yeah it's over that it's 2.2 .2 on this system so take off the sources which was just under half a gig and you're looking at about a system of 1.6 gig temp temporary system of about 1.6 gig so that's uh roughly two-thirds of the original size now. Now I can back this up. Um, I used to keep this myself. I used to do a backup of the temporary system but found I had all these archives of temporary systems that I'd never use again. I think I might maybe use them once or twice. Uh, the only thing I can think that would be a good idea to do this is as a checkpoint in case something went wrong in chapter 8. Now chapter 8 is reasonably straightforward so the chance of that happening is minimal. What what we've done so far is probably the most complex part um, so I don't think there's any real benefit in showing that. Um, if you do want to do it by all means do it but note what has to be done here. You need to leave the true environment so you need to type in exit um, you need to be root and need to double check that the LFS variable is set. You need to unmount the virtual file systems because you don't want to back those up. Check that you've got at least one gigabyte of free disk space. Obviously you need some space to create this archive. These are the commands for compressing, archiving and compressing the system that we've got at the moment. 
Um, then there's some instructions which hopefully you won't need to do of how to extract that back to where it was. Uh, but irrespective of that, after you've run these commands, hopefully you won't need the restore, but after you run these commands to back and create back up and create the archive from the current system, it's important that you go back to this link first of all to reattach the virtual kernel file systems and after that enter the troop environment with the troop and command that we ran to get into this environment now and that's absolutely essential um, and that would be the same if you're in the middle of um, well any part of this chapter we've been in and any part of chapter 8 you'd need to uh, basically unmount the virtual file systems or sorry come out the truth with the exit unmount the virtual file systems then you could shut down the system and then next time you bring the system up you'd need to obviously set the LFS variable and everything then mount the partitions mount the virtual kernel file systems and then finally enter the troop environment. So you can see why I said it's probably sometimes easier just to put the machine to sleep for um, a period of time if you want to have a break or leave it for any, any amount of time. So for example, now it's getting towards lunch, um, might want to, might want to uh, stop for lunch now uh, and then carry on afterwards. So rather than, you know, like I say, just shutting it all down and you know, stripping all down, shutting down the machine, turning on the machine, building it all up, risking an error again. It's probably better just to um, put the machine on standby. So with that, I will attempt to sleep this machine and resume after I've had a bite to eat. So I'll click sleep and just check the machine yep it's got a flashing light on the front so it's entered sleep mode so i'll resume and we'll start building the main chapter 8 system in the next video